Hello everyone and welcome back to the sixth episode in the Building a Smart Home Cheaply series. So now that we have Home Assistant installed and we have remote access to Home Assistant, we're gonna go ahead and get our phone connected. Now, if you don't have Home Assistant available remotely just yet, you can use the card in the top right corner for instructions on how to do that or use the link in the description to watch my video on it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pull out your phone. These instructions are gonna be for iOS. On iOS, go to the App Store and search for Home Assistant. There's a few different community apps for Home Assistant, but you're gonna want the one that's created by Nabu Casa. Once it's installed, press open. Continuing on to the enter address manually, you're just gonna type in the DuckDNS URL that you have or the URL that was generated when you signed up with Home Assistant Cloud. Make sure to include your port number. On the next screen, you'll press connect. If you run into an issue where it says initializing and nothing happens, just press the stop in the top right corner and refresh the page. On this screen, you're gonna be given the option of what information you wanna to provide to Home Assistant. So if you wanna do automations based on location, allow your location to be shared and choose always allow. And if you want, you can also have notifications sent to your iOS device. So if you want that, go ahead and allow that as well. One cool thing about Home Assistant are the critical alerts. Critical alerts were, I believe, introduced in iOS 12 and essentially they bypass your do not disturb. So if there's a certain notification that you wanna automate and send to your device, such as unusual activity in your house or some serious event, you can actually bypass that do not disturb and play a sound and a critical notification on your iOS device. So I'm gonna allow this. Home Assistant won't do this on its own. It'll only happen if you create an automation that triggers that sort of notification. Continuing on, we can see it's getting linked up. Now that we're logged in, we can see all the new data points that our device has added to Home Assistant. If you're manually organizing your home screen, then you're not gonna see these data points show up. But if you wanna find them, go to the menu icon in the top left corner, go to configuration, then go to devices. Here we can see our iPad device because I'm using my iPad in this case. If I click on that, I can see all sorts of information being transmitted. Things like my current location, the Wi-Fi that my iPad is connected to, the amount of storage available, the battery percentage, and iOS even transfers something like activity where you can guess what sort of activity you're doing, whether that's running, walking, cycling, etc. So now we can trigger automations based off of all of these different things. There's different events that will trigger when an iOS device will update its information in Home Assistant one of which is location-based. Another is periodic, where it just periodically occurs on a time interval, which I believe is calculated based on your activity and how often you use the application. So if you're using Home Assistant more often on iOS, it will actually transmit information more frequently. Now that we're all set up with Home Assistant, we are actually able to get into these automations. Thanks for watching, and I'm hoping you're enjoying the series. As always, subscribe if you're interested in more content, and I will see you in the next one.